Hello and what's up, GSC Pokemon Challenges fam? How are you guys doing? We're back again, and we're down to three more episodes of this Faulkner Minimum Battle Series, and then we're on to Bugsy. We're making a lot of progress. We've already gotten 131 Pokemon to beat Faulkner straight up. Nine Pokemon have needed to use Struggle to get through the section, and 70 Pokemon have failed. Today, we've got 16 more challengers, and we're starting to get into some of the really strong best of the best Pokemon, as well as a few randos. I mean, we've got like Ditto in here today. Magikarp's obviously gonna fail, but we've got some pretty strong Pokemon at this point. Tauros was a Gen 1 beast. Lapras, Gyarados. I mean, the evolutions have never been anything to sneeze at. Miltank is an absolute beast in Gen 2, from what I understand. Porygon and Porygon 2 are kind of interesting, and then I don't really know much about Fanfi and Donphan. We're just gonna have to see how they go. But if I'm to make a prediction today, I'm going to guess that we get through with almost everything other than Ditto and Magikarp. That's that's my prediction. I think everything else probably just crushes this section of the game, but I could be wrong. Place your own predictions down in the comment section below. As usual, I always love to see them. And let's get into this. At the end, I'll break down how we're going to do the last two episodes because we got to figure out how to do some of these redos as well. But we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Let's go. Today, we're going to start off with Tauros and Miltank since they're kind of, you know, the cow and the bull. They, they make perfect sense to match up against each other. Then we're going to go into a little bit of Lapras versus Gyarados action, since we can kind of put those two Pokemon very similar water types. I mean, they've got a different secondary typing, but overall very, very strong Pokemon. Then we're going to go after Ditto into just a ton of evolutions. Then we'll wrap up with the Porygons and finally with the Fanfi Don fan. So let's start off with Tauros, the absolute bull of Gen 1. But Gen 2 wasn't actually that nice to this Pokemon. It's only 66th in rank out of base stats with 490. Its special attack just got completely nerfed in Gen 2, causing it to not be quite as good as it was in Gen 1. Gen 1, you could be using things like Blizzard with this Pokemon, Thunderbolt with this Pokemon. They made good sense as coverage moves. The normal typing with any normal type attacking move at the start of the game with that massive 100 attack stat and that 110 speed, I think is going to be enough to get through. With that being said, let's just get into this. So we're just going to have to see how Tauros is here. Obviously, it was the king of Gen 1, but this is Gen 2. I'm not sure how good it's going to be as we go through the full game, but you always have to keep in mind, even its reputation in Gen 1 came from type coverage from TMs. It was actually a terrible Pokemon in the early game because it just didn't have anything to use against Brock. It was just using normal type moves. So here we have put Tauros into the Totodial Ball. We'll go up against the Chikorita line in this one. We're not going to give it a nickname. Let's just see what the starting move set is. And we've got the standard same thing that it had in Gen 1, Tackle and Tail Whip. So here going into Rival 1, I don't think it even matters if we have the Baryon or not. I think we're just going to destroy him either way. So let's just go into this. And uh, strategy, I think we just tackle. Tackle did decent damage. Okay, he uses a Growl, so I'll Tail Whip him just because he used the Growl, but he's only doing three damage to us. We're doing significantly more to him, so that's an easy four hit KO. No problem at all. So we can just move on at this point and... Uh, yeah, I think that Tauros is going to do fine. Let's just pick it back up when we get to Faulkner's Gym. So here we are in Faulkner's Gym. We are just going to go ahead and save the game and let's check the stats as we go into the Honest Abe fight here. We're coming in at level 6. We've got 26 HP, Tackle and Tail Whip. We've got 18 Attack, 18 Defense, 11 Special Attack, 15 Special Defense, and 20 Speed. We're going to outspeed even on the first Spearow, in spite of the fact that we're three levels lower. So this shouldn't be too hard, but let's just find out. So Honest Abe, attempt number one. I'm just going to try to use Tackle the whole way. We seem to be doing more than enough damage. Yes, the berry activates, but it's a guaranteed win as long as we don't get tons of misses with Tackle, my goodness. But there we go. So we get through that first fight. I think we can just heal up, take on the God Rod, and get straight to Faulkner. 
So now standing right next to Faulkner, I'm going to check the stats one last time here. We're at level seven where we've got 29 HP, same moveset as before, but now we have 21 attack, 20 defense, 12 special attack, 17 special defense, and 22 speed. We've only gained one level and it's because we're in the slow level up group. I don't think that actually matters though. I think we've got enough power to just rage right through this gym. Let's see. So Faulkner attempt one. We're not going for any BS here. We're just going straight all in on the tackles. And we easily knock out the Pidgey. We grow to level eight and we learned Rage. Obviously Rage is good in Gen 2. So he can use Gust and build our Rage, which just boosts the power of Rage every single time. So we easily knock him out. Faulkner never had a shot. He, he just never had a shot in that fight. So yeah, Tauros, early game, definitely still a beast. The place where I would worry about Tauros is what are we going to use when we get to Jasmine? But we also have to think about what kinds of moves we'll have available to take on Morty. Those are kind of the scary spots. Ghosts and steel types, rock types, things like that. So here we can check the stats just before we move on. We are at level eight. We've got 32 HP. We've got our new move set, including Rage, which will be very good as we go through the run. And it looks like later on we will learn Pursuit via level up. So there is a chance that we'll be able to get a move that can hit ghosts at least. And we've got 23 attack, 22 defense, 14 special attack, 18 special defense, and 25 speed. I think the second gym is at least already in the bag for this Pokemon. Third gym could get interesting. The fourth gym is probably where I start to have a few worries for Tauros, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, with Tauros done, it's now time to see if Miltank is just as good in the early game. Let's find out. So next up is Miltank, and Miltank I remember from my very first playthrough of this generation because I thought that this Pokemon was way too OP when I first fought Whitney. And I'm just not sure how good Miltank is or isn't with its normal starting moveset. I just remembered that rollout completely destroying me and I assume if we have any sort of decent, like normal type attacking move at the start of the game, we're going to be just fine with this Pokemon. So same as Tauros, we've put Miltank into the Total Dial Ball and let's just see what the starting moveset is. So we are starting with Tackle and Growl, which in some ways is worse because we can only growl to lower the attack of opponents as opposed to having a way to lower their defense with Tail Whip. Yeah, looking at the stats for Miltank, we can see that it's just a slightly different stat distribution. It's got lower speed and lower attack, higher defensive stats. So hopefully that just results in it being a little bit tankier, I guess. But we'll just have to see if that actually has any reasonable effect on the run as we go through, or if it's just something that causes any sort of difference, I guess. I think this is going to be really easy. So once again, for rival one, I'm not even going to bother taking off the berry. We're just going to go straight into this fight. We'll growl at him and then just go into our tackle spam. He's only doing two damage per hit. We're doing significantly more. So this is a guaranteed win 100% of the time. Now, I'm actually thinking as we get later in the Pokedex here, most of these Pokemon are not really going to have too much trouble with rival one. And in fact, I think we're just going to have a much higher win rate against Faulkner overall. I mean, these are some of the best of the best Pokemon. And if we're not beating Faulkner reliably with legendaries, like what the heck is even going on? <laughs> yes, a lot of these Pokemon will be in the slow level up group from here on out, which is a pretty big disadvantage. But I think these Pokemon have enough power that they can simply get through these fights without any difficulty. So coming into Faulkner's gym with our Miltank, we're at level 6, we've got 29 HP, Tackle and Growl is the moveset, and we've got 16 attack, 19 defense, 11 special attack, 15 special defense, 18 speed. We're not going to outspeed here against the Spearow. So we may need to get into some Growl strats. I'm going to start off just going all in on attack though. Let's see if it works. So Honest Abe, attempt number one, we can simply spam tackle. We seem to be having him in a four hit KO range. We're going to heal up here with the berry. So even though he's doing decent damage to us, it's not enough. We easily get through that fight. 
Now we can just heal up, beat up on the God Rod, and make our way straight to Faulkner. So we have made it to Faulkner now, and let's just check the stats as we come in. The only thing that happened with Rod is that we gained one more level to level 7, so we've got 32 HP, Tackle and Growl, and we've got 18 attack, 22 defense, 12 special attack, 17 special defense, and 21 speed. This should be more than enough, but we'll try all in attack first, then we'll see if we need to mess around with any growls or not. But with the berry, I think we just get through this fight pretty reliably. Faulkner attempt number one, we're just going to spam tackle on his Pidgey. His Pidgey's doing three damage per hit. We knock it out in three attacks, level up to level eight, and we learn defense curl, okay. Defense curl with some rollouts later on could be pretty good. But here against Pidgeotto, I'm just going all in on attack. We do heal with the berry there, but it's a four hit KO to take out the Pidgeotto. It was never in question. That was an easy, 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 easy win. So Miltank passes, gets to level eight, 35 HP. We've got Tackle, Growl, and Defense Curl as we go into the next section. We have 20 attack, 24 defense, 14 special attack, 18 special defense, 23 speed, but now the real question is, what moves do we learn in the next section? So here, looking at the next section, we will get access to Mud Slap, as we can see on the moveset there. We should also learn Stomp at level 13, Milk Drink at level 19 if we get there, which would give us a healing move. But I don't think we get quite that far, so we're just going to have to go with the Mud Slap. It does not appear that we learned Swift, so we're just going to have to use Mud Slap against the Ghastly on Rival 2's team. But I think that will be enough overall to be able to get through the next section. And then once we get to Goldenrod, we get access to tons of moves. Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, I think Ice Punch has to be in there too. And of course, we're going to get Return, and we're going to get moves like Rollout via TM. You can actually get that before Whitney. And that should be enough to make the next section pretty good. So this is a Pokemon I think is going to be pretty strong for quite a while. The real question is just, will we hit a wall against Chuck? Will we hit a wall against Morty? Will we hit a wall against Jasmine? If we can get through those, I think this Pokemon has all the moves that it needs to be really good in the full game challenge. But with that being said, let's look at our progress so far. We can see we have added Miltank and Tauros to the pass column. It was never in question. Now let's move on to Gyarados and Lapras and see how they perform. So we're going to go with Gyarados first. Gyarados is a Pokemon that I've always loved since I was a kid. I was crazy about grinding when I was young, so I always got the Magikarp before Mount Moon in Pokemon Red and Blue. And it was a Gyarados before I ever got to Misty because I would grind everything up to the level of the ace of the next gym leader. So everything on my team had to be level 21 before I got to Misty, including that Magikarp. So obviously I got the Gyarados and I knew that it was a very strong Pokemon. That being said, it didn't have a great starting moveset in Pokemon Yellow where it only started the game with Tackle. Let's see if it's the same here in Gen 2. I'm not entirely sure. Gyarados has some really good stats. It's ranked number 15 out of 251 Pokemon. With 540 total base stats, it's got 125 in attack. Its defense is nothing to sneeze at. It's got decent HP, decent speed. It's not going to outspeed against Honest Abe, but it should have enough power to be able to get through this section, I think just because of that massive attack stat. But wait, what am I talking about? That's not Tackle, that's Thrash. Thrash, 90 base power. It does confuse the user after it finishes its three, two or three turns, I believe. But uh, this should be more than strong enough with our massive attack stat to get through this section. I mean, 120 attack plus a 90 base power move. I think we're just gonna destroy our opponents. What better way to test this out than to just come into the Rival 1 fight where we can hopefully just thrash his Chikorita. So here we're going to just hold down A on Thrash. It's the only move and it takes two hits to knock him out. So uh, that one's never in question. And the Rival's not actually going to be as scary for this Pokemon for a while because of the fact that Grass type moves are only neutrally effective against Gyarados because of its dual water flying typing. 
So it's not really that we have a weakness to any of the rival's starters. We just have the neutral effectiveness from grass type, which is why we chose the Chikorita line. What we're actually going to be more worried about is a Pokemon that can use electric type moves. Electric type moves against Gyarados could be rough, but we don't have to deal with electric type moves for quite a while here, I think, in the early game. So I think we're going to do pretty good, but let's just see. So we have made it to Faulkner's Gym with our Gyarados. Unfortunately, not a shiny Gyarados or a red Gyarados, but that's fine. We're level six. We've got 29 HP. Thrash is the move. And we've got 21 attack, 16 defense, 14 special attack, 18 special defense, and 16 speed. We're not going to outspeed just yet, but I think this is going to be fine against Honest Abe. Let's just go all in on attack and see if we can get him down. So here, Thrash did pretty good damage, and we're just knocking him out in two hits with a critical hit. Very nice. So Honest Abe, not even a challenge. Here, we can just heal up very quickly, take on Godrod. This guy's getting no respect. He's Rodney Dangerfield in this one. The only thing to note is we do become confused from using Thrash. So we actually needed the berry here because we hit ourselves in confusion twice against Rod, but we did take him down. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Now, we do have a bitter berry. So bitter berry strats could come into play here if necessary. I'm going to go with the regular berry first, but let's just see how the Falconer fight goes, because we will end up getting confused somewhere in this fight. Here, going in with the stats, we've got a level 7 Gyarados with 32 HP. We still just know Thrash. We've got 24 attack, 18 defense, 15 special attack, 21 special defense, and 18 speed. So we'll outspeed at least the first Pidgey, and I think we level up after Pidgey. So we should outspeed Pidgeotto too. Let's just see how it actually goes. So Faulkner attempt number one. Let's thrash him. It takes two turns to knock out the Pidgey. He got a critical hit that did five damage, but I don't think that matters. We level up to level eight. Here we are going to be confused, but we get the thrash to land and we're no longer confused and two hits knock out the Pidgeotto. So fortunately, that was easy and <laughs> we have successfully beaten Faulkner with Gyarados. I don't think it was ever in question. And really, this Pokemon should be just fine in the next section. It's part flying type, so Bugsy's not really going to do that much damage, I don't think. What do we learn in order to take down Rival 2's Ghastly? That is the question. Looking at the move set, we're not going to learn Bite until level 20. I'm not sure we're going to get there. So we're probably just stuck with our current move Thrash in any TMs that we learn but there don't seem to be any TMs to learn in this next section. So this is going to be a Pokemon that's going to have to use struggle strats to get through that ghastly from the looks of things. That could be a bit of a challenge. We're just going to have to see how it actually works out. We're definitely not getting to level 20, I don't think, as a slow level up Pokemon. But with that being said, we did get through with Gyarados. We'll worry about its struggles against Rival 2 later. For now, let's go and check out Lapras. So Lapras is a Pokemon that I'd like to joke about a little bit in Gen 1, because it can get all the way to the end of the game on minimum battles fairly easily. But when you're on zero DVs, it struggles to beat the final champion on minimum battles. It's basically smooth sailing until there because it has such a great wide move pool. I mean, moves like Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Psychic you can use with it, but it just doesn't quite have the offensive output or the speed that it needs to get through the champion in Gen 1. Here, of course, this is Gen 2. It could be a completely different story, especially because there's been a special split, but I'm not sure. The speed is the problem with this Pokemon, but it does have a ton of HP. So here we're going to pick up our Lapras. Let's check the starting moveset. In Gen 1, it started with Water Gun, but here it starts with Water Gun, Growl, and Sing. So we can actually go for some very inaccurate sleep strats if we need to in this one. And that Stab Water Gun should be pretty good. Growl is probably not going to be necessary given our high HP and our decent defense. 
but we'll just have to see. We can always mess with growl strats if we find a tough spot. Now, the one disadvantage of Water Gun is our only starting attacking move is that it's not going to be effective against the enemy Chikorita here in Rival 1. So let's see if we need to use some sleep strats here. Water Gun is doing three damage to him and he's doing three damage back to us. So it's probably wise to growl at him at least once. He misses a tackle. I came in with the berry. I don't know if I want to use the berry, so I'm going to put him to sleep with Sing. Fortunately, it hit there. It's a very inaccurate move, but we hit another thing even. There we go. And now let's just see if we can slowly whittle him down. He keeps waking up and we keep putting him back to sleep with Sing. We've hit all three Sings in this battle and we do manage to take him out with 18 HP remaining. So we were just fine there overall. Now it's worth noting that hitting three Sings in a single battle without missing any of them was pretty lucky, honestly. It's only 55% accurate. So it's basically like flipping a coin every time that you use that move. We also have to consider that in Gen 2, opponents do wake up and attack on the last turn. So it's not quite as good as it would have been in Gen 1, where you could simply reset for good sleep luck and beat basically anything. But it was even with Sing Strats at the end of the game in Gen 1 that I was running into troubles. Just because that move is so inaccurate and it's so random how many turns your opponent stays asleep. But we will keep Sing on the moveset, I think for quite a while, just in case we need that level of luck, because it is a way to get through on minimum battles, even if it's not the best way to play the game of Pokemon by any means. When you don't have the option to go grind extra fights, sometimes sleep strats are the best strats. So we have made it now to Faulkner's Gym with Lapras. We're at level six, we've got 33 HP, Water Gun, Growl, and Sing. We've got 17 attack, 16 defense, 17 special attack, 18 special defense, and 14 speed. I'm not sure if we're gonna outspeed even Pidgeotto at the end, but let's just see how the Honest Abe fight goes first. I'm going to put him to sleep here. I think this is the best strategy. Even if we miss a bunch of things at the beginning, I think that's fine. Now I'm actually going to growl at him a few times just to reduce his damage output. And then we can try to keep him asleep with Sing and then just use the water guns. And it looks like he's going to be a five hit KO here from the looks of things. Oh, we get a lucky critical hit there. So we do manage to knock him out fairly easily. Here, I'm going to just heal up with a potion, take on the God Rod, and then it's on to Faulkner. So now going into Faulkner, we can go ahead and check the stats of our Lapras. We've made it to level seven, 37 HP, same moveset as before with the Baryon, of course. And we've got 19 attack, 18 defense, 19 special attack, 20 special defense, and 15 speed. So yeah, we're definitely not outspeeding against the Pidgeotto in this one. We're probably going to have to go for some sleep strats, but I'm going to lead off just trying to attack. Let's see how the all-in attack strat goes first. So first attempt against Faulkner, I'm just going to hold down A on Water Gun. It looks to be a three hit KO here against Pidgey and we take it down nicely. Now we level up and we learn Mist, so we could avoid some status that way. But uh, here against this Pidgeotto, we're just gonna stick with the all-in attack. Gust is doing six damage per hit, but we have a lot of HP, so the all-in attack strat works. We are able to four hit the Pidgeotto and get through that fight just fine. Now the other big factor here we gotta keep in mind, First, let's check the stats as we come out of Faulkner. We're at level eight. We've got 41 HP, Water Gun, Growl, Sing, and Mist. And our current stats are 21 attack, 20 defense, 21 special attack, 22 special defense, and 17 speed. But looking at the next section, we can see that we are going to learn Body Slam at level 15. And if we can get there, that would be an incredibly strong move for this section of the game. We also have the advantage that Water Gun can hit ghosts, so we don't have to worry about any struggle strats in the next section. As far as TMs go, I don't think we're gonna learn anything useful in this next section. We're gonna have to wait for a little while to get any new moves via TM that are actually that useful. But Lapras should get pretty strong moves as we go through the game. It's gonna learn Ice Beam via level up. It's gonna get Confuse Ray. This could be a pretty good Pokemon. And 
The only thing that I think is really going to hold Lapras back is the fact that in some fights, just because of the fact that it's in the slow level up group, it's not going to be strong enough to knock out opponents. It's attacking stats just aren't that good, but it should always have a chance if it can land sings and get enough luck for opponents to stay asleep for enough turns. So that's always going to be the question with this Pokemon. I think it took me about 400 resets in order to beat the game of Pokemon Yellow on minimum battles with this Pokemon. But Gen 2, it could be a different animal. Opponents are at lower levels in the later game. Until we get to Red, of course. <laughs> anyway, Lapras does make it through this section. And now we've got to get to the two Pokemon that I'm the most nervous about. Magikarp and ditto so let's do magikarp and ditto and then we'll check the progress so far now magikarp is a pokemon that we already basically know we're going to have to use struggle strats with and we're just gonna have to see if they work out or not given that measly base 10 attack stat are you kidding me and only base 20 hp the advantage we have is that we have kind of decent defense and we've got decent speed but i don't think this is going to be enough i think there's no way the magikarp gets through this but we've all been there training a magikarp from level five at least that was me in gen one and you get through eventually but it was basically all about leveling up until you got to gyarados now some things like the bubble carp that are available as event pokemon in gen two we may come back and test those later because I am very interested to see how Bubble Carp would do in Gen 2, but for now we're doing just the normal level 5 movesets. Keep that in mind, and Magikarp doesn't really have a moveset. And of course, we're going to start the game with only Splash, so I'm going to take one liberty here. I'm just going to lock in the Splash PP at 0, because we already know that the only way we could ever get through any fight is to use Struggle. So it's time to test out Magikarp with Struggle. We're going to try Rival 1. We absolutely need berries in this one. There's no way we get through these fights without them. Let's see if it's enough, though. So here against Chikorita, Struggle did three damage, and we took one damage as Recoil. He tried to use Growl, which is nice, but he did like four damage there, I think, with Tackle. Three damage. OK, we do heal up with the berry. We might have a shot here, but this is going to be close. Here he gets us down. We're down to 4 HP, but we do manage to beat Rival 1. So that's that's a good start. So now we're basically going to tell the police officer, no, arrest Professor Elm for giving us this Magikarp. What kind of person is he to give a kid a Magikarp and say, oh yeah, this will protect you as you go to the next town. Oh, Professor Elm, you're a terrible human being. So here we even have to worry about the youngster Mikey fight. Normally I just skip this one unless there's a good reason to talk about it. But here, I'm not sure if we're going to win or not. I did not put on a berry before this fight, so we could get wrecked. He's doing like three damage per hit with his tackles. And yeah, we just lost to Mikey <laughs> and I didn't save. No. So here for round two against Mikey, let's go ahead and put the berry on because we definitely need it. Let's save the game and let's try this fight one more time. So here, I mean, struggle is doing decent damage to a level two Pidgey, of course. But now the problem is the Rattata doing like four damage per hit and it uses Tail Whip. So it did like six damage there. We have to get at least two hits here. We do get it this time. He goes for enough tail whips, but that was terrible. And obviously this Pokemon would take a lot more time than what we're showing here, because in reality, you would have to go and use up all the PP in Splash against something so that you could even use Struggle. And then you would be going back to the Pokemon Center or healing with potions in order to avoid Pokemon Center visits, it's it's just terrible. Like, grinding the Magikarp runs is one of the worst things ever. But we have made it to Faulkner's Gym, so uh, let's check the stats. We're coming in at level 6 with 20 HP. We have no PP in Splash so that we can use Struggle. We have 8 attack, 13 defense, 8 special attack, 9 special defense, and 16 speed. I don't think we get through Honest Abe though, I think he's gonna wreck us. Let's find out. 
So here on this day of attempt number one with Magikarp, Heck did eight damage, and then he's got us all the way down to three damage. Two hits with our struggle has gotten him down to 21 HP. So he's a nine hit KO range here. And uh, there's no way that we're getting nine hits off on him before we get knocked out. So uh, Magikarp, we can just eliminate this Pokemon. He's not getting through Faulkner. No way, no how. We kind of knew that, but you know, for the sake of completionism, we had to at least test it out. So uh, yeah, let's just throw Magikarp into that fail column and hope to never see that Pokemon again. But that being said, Bubble Carp did exist. And we also have to keep in mind that the Pokemon does learn Flail in Gen 2. So in theory, it does have ways that it could beat the entire game as a solo challenge. We're gonna have to come back and mess with that at a later time. But for today, for a minimum battles challenge, it's out of there. Let's go move on to Ditto. So of course, Ditto is one of the worst Pokemon in the entire game. It's got 48 base in every single stat. But the real issue with this Pokemon, we already know its moveset because it's the same as Gen 1. It's gonna start the game with Transform. And it has to use Transform the first turn in order to get access to the opponent's moves. And then it only has five PP in each move in order to try to win the rest of the battle. So Ditto's gonna be pretty terrible. We may end up having to use some struggle strats. Now with the Ditto hate aside, there is actually one situation that I found where Ditto is really, really good. That is when I did the Gen 1 challenge from Van Man to beat the game without items. I was trying to do it on minimum battles. One of the strategies that I found that makes a team challenge pretty easy in Gen 1 is simply capturing a Ditto and using Ditto at least as part of a team to completely crush the Elite Four. A single Ditto is basically impossible, but when you have two or three Dittos on a team, it becomes incredibly easy to get through those sections of the game because you can just Ditto whichever opponent you want, swap the Pokemon out when its moveset is no longer good or when it runs out of PP, and then swap it back in. I was beating Agatha with the team of Dittos. I was beating the champion with the team of Dittos and they were all wild caught with no extra rare candies or anything. That is the big advantage of this Pokemon. But we ha always have to take at least one turn of hits from our opponent before we get the chance to get their moves. And that's the part that I think is gonna make a solo challenge with this Pokemon an absolute nightmare. Granted, I could be proven wrong, so let's just see if we can even beat Rival 1 with the Ditto strats. Now, of course, our Ditto does have one pretty massive advantage going into the Rival 1 fight, which is that we have berries and he doesn't. And that could allow us to get through this one. Let's find out. So, Rival 1, I'm going to lead off with Transform to become Chikorita. Very nice. He growled at me. I'm going to growl back at him. In fact, I'm going to go hard on the Growls because we get a heal and he doesn't. And we've only got 5 PP in Tackle anyway, so we're not going to do very much damage. But he's only doing 1 damage per hit to us now. We've run out of PP in Tackle, so now we have to Growl. And now we're going to have to go into Struggle Strats. And it's not ideal, but we got legitimately to Struggle here. And... It is doing at least enough damage that we get through the Rival 1 fight without too much difficulty. But that is the issue right there. We're going to end up using Struggle a lot with this Pokemon because it's just going to run out of PP with only 5 PP per move. It's just not really going to work out in a lot of spots. So now it's time for Youngster Mikey and I think this is another fight where we actually need to put a berry on. Just because we're going to have to copy the stats and moves of the level two Pidgey at the start of his team. So here we transform into Pidgey. Good job. And now we are tackling, we are at a higher level, so we do more damage. Keep in mind, level is part of the damage calculation. So that's why our tackles are doing a lot more damage in spite of the fact that we don't really have much attack power, but we get knocked out because of the fact that we just were way too weak because we're effectively a level two Pidgey in this fight. Let's try this again. So we'll transform. 
and then just spam our tackles here. We're going to end up using our berry pretty soon. He tail whips us and tackles us and knocks us out. I think we need not to get tail whipped and then have him tackle us. Otherwise, we're going to have to try struggle strats here. So here, tackle is doing six damage per hit normally, and we struggle and knock ourselves out. <laughs> so clearly we have to go into struggle because that is the only way we're getting through this fight. And of course, if youngster Mikey is causing us to have to use struggle strats, that does not bode well for Faulkner's gym at all. But we did do about half damage there to the Pidgey this time. And here against the Rattata, it does like three damage per hit because we have much better defense before we transform into a Pidgey. And we managed to knock him out easily this, this time. So maybe struggle's the way to go. So here coming into Faulkner's gym with our ditto, we're level five, we've got 23 HP, we know transform, we've got 12 attack, 12 defense, 12 special attack, 12 special defense, and 12 speed. We're not gonna outspeed here. We are going to give a berry and I'm going to try with transform strats first, then I'm going to try struggle strats, but I'm willing to bet that Honest Abe himself is already a wall. Let's find out. So here against Honest Abe, we get pecked for 14 damage. It was a critical hit, but we transform into Pid or into Spiro now. Here, I can actually use some status moves like Growl here in order to reduce his damage. And we need a critical hit, but we get through Honest Dave on the first attempt. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ditto, you beast. Oh my goodness. So here, we're going to give another berry here. And let's save the game and get into the fight here against the next opponent, which is the God Rod. We have to transform on the first Pidgey, of course. And now I'm going to sand attack his Pidgey for a minute here. Let's just sand attack it and now go into our tackles. We will heal up there with the berry. Yeah, maybe I went too hard on the sand attacks there. But here, let's sand attack this Pidgey too. Two sand attacks there gets the accuracy nice and low. We've run out of PP, so we do have to struggle here. But I think, oh, we got a critical hit. Are you kidding me? I thought we were going to get through that fight. Let's try round two against Rod. <laughs> Oh, God, Rod, getting revenge for all the things I've said about him throughout this entire series. So here, round three. Now we're still going with the sand attack strats and now into our tackles. Yeah, the problem is that the sand attacks just really aren't that good. <laughs> so that's enough messing around with this one. We've had 10 resets on Rod. The first one looked like we could just get through, but it just didn't end up working out. So we're going to go struggle strats here. Let's see if struggle turns out to be enough. So here our first attempt against Rod with struggle. We seem to be doing decent damage here. Yes, he's still going to do decent damage back to us. We're going to have to heal with the berry on the first Pidgey right there. But we get through with 16 HP remaining. We might need a critical hit. We just got it. But let's see if we can survive. Oh, we're down to two HP. We needed a miss. We needed a miss. Let's try one more time here with this strategy, but we might have to call it right here because if it's taking more than one critical hit to get through this, oh, we just got two critical hits in a row there on the first Pidgey though, but we're still only on 19 HP. So if we lose this one, I think we just have to give up. Like, yes, he got a critical hit on me too, but I'm just not sure that it matters. We knock each other out. <laughs> okay, that could come down to ranges, but like I said, we got two critical hits. He got a crit on us. Let's try if we just get one critical hit. There we got a miss from his second Pidgey and another miss. That was insanely lucky, but we do get through on the second attempt with the struggle strats. So I guess I just have to take it. We're going into the Faulkner section. I'm going to come in here and just go for struggle, I think. So there we go. We've gone to the Ruins of Alf and gotten one more berry. Before we fight Faulkner, though, let's check the stats. Coming in, Ditto is at level 8. It's got 28 HP. We're coming in with no PP and Transform. We're going to go struggle strats first here. We've got 15 in every single stat. Let's see if this works or not in this fight. So Faulkner attempt number one, 
Struggle looks to be doing, it looks to be about a four hit KO here against the Pidgey. We do manage to knock it out and get to Pidgeotto, but Gust is doing like eight damage here. So yeah, seven to eight damage. No way that that strategy works. Now I will give myself one PP and transform just to see if we can get through with a transform strat. That just didn't look close enough that we're gonna get through with like a single critical hit. So let's see. With one transform, let's see if this works though. So here we're going to transform into Pidgey, which gets us tackle and mud slap. Oh yeah, wait, we only learned mud slap, which can't affect the flying types. So yeah, tackle is not very good. Still a four hit KO there. But now we have only one PP left and then we have to use up the PP and mud slap, which we're never going to be able to do. So just like that, we can eliminate Ditto from the challenge. Sure enough, Ditto just isn't good enough <laughs> to get through this. I'm surprised it got all the way to Faulkner, to be perfectly honest. That was a surprise. Ditto's bad. Ditto's very, very bad. We all know it. It is what it is. Let's move on to a Pokemon that actually has a chance. So let's go back and look at our progress so far. We have added two Pokemon to the fail column, and we've added a couple to the pass column in the form of Gyarados and Lapras, joining, of course, Tauros and Miltank up there. But Magikarp and Ditto, it was always kind of known. These Pokemon are bad. They're not going to get through this section. Now it's time to move on to the Eeveelutions. I think the best way to go about this is simply to go through all of the evolved evolutions first, then check out Eevee itself. Pretty sure that these evolutions are getting through, but we're just going to have to see if that is the case. I'm going to go all the way to the end of the list first. Let's go from Umbreon. We'll do Umbreon, Espeon, Flareon, Jolteon, Vaporeon, and then finally do Eevee and come back and check the results. So of course, as an evolution, Umbreon has a fairly good base stat total of 525. I believe it's the same for all of the evolutions, and they just have different distributions. In the case of Umbreon, it's heavily weighted towards defense. 110 defense, 130 special defense, and 95 HP. Its attacking stats and speed are not actually that great. So we're going to have to see what moves we start off with with this Pokemon. Now, I have to admit, when I was younger, I wasn't really big into the evolutions. The only one I liked was Jolteon. It's because Jolteon was a speed demon, had good coverage and the fact that it had access to pin missile. It was one of the only Pokemon that could get a bug type move and not be weak to psychic. Of course, you can point to Paris and Parasect, but they were just bad. Jolteon also got access to Double Kick, got access to Thunder, could use Sand Attack strats if you really wanted to. It was overall a pretty good Pokemon. Here for Umbreon, I've put it into the Totodile Ball. We're going to see how it goes and especially what its starting moveset is. But Umbreon as a Dark type could be pretty good as we go through the game if we can just get through this first section. So Umbreon starts the game with Tackle and Tail Whip. <laughs> okay, I mean, it makes sense. It's basically just an Eevee moveset. And maybe that's what all these evolutions are gonna start with, I'm not sure. It's probably okay. I mean, Tail Whip synergizes with the Tackle. The real question is, do Umbreon's low attack stats affect this section. So first things first, let's take on Rival 1. I'm going to take off the berry in this one just because I don't want to use it unnecessarily. And let's just see if we can beat him on the first attempt. So the strategy I think here is to start off by just tackling him. He misses a growl. I think that's perfectly fine. Now I think we just go all in on attack. Unless he starts growling a bunch at us, then we might use Tail Whip. But we're getting through this, it looks like, without even getting down to yellow health. So Rival 1 goes down and we can move on in the game. So we have made it to Faulkner's Gym with our Umbreon level 6 with 29 HP. Tackle and Tail Whip is the move set. We've got 14 attack, 20 defense, 14 special attack, 22 special defense, and 14 speed. We're obviously not going to be good in any of the offensive categories, but we do have the ability to give a berry. Let's get into the Honest Abe fight and see how this goes. 
We're going to try all out attack first, then if it doesn't work, we'll mess around with some tail whips. So here it looks like he's doing 5 damage per hit to us and we did 4 damage to him, so he is a 7 hit KO. And we are in a 6 hit KO range, but we have the berries, so without a critical hit, I think this might work out. We get a critical hit there against him, and we do win on the first attempt, leveling up to level 7. And sure enough, Rod was no trouble there. We level up to level 8 and learn Sand Attack from that fight. So now we can heal up very quickly, give a berry, and it's time to check the stats going into Faulkner. At level 8, we've got 35 HP. We've got Tackle, Tail Whip, and Sand Attack now as the moveset. 18 attack, 25 defense, 17 special attack, 28 special defense, and 18 in speed. We're fast enough to outspeed at least the Pidgey here. Not sure if we're going to level up in the middle of the fight and outspeed the Pidgeotto, but I think this is enough. We can go for accuracy strats if we really want to. So here we're going to lead off just with the all-in attack strat. He misses a tackle, which is very nice. So we knock out the Pidgey in three hits. Here against Pidgeotto, its Gust is doing 5 damage per hit. We are doing, it looks like, about 4 damage per hit to him. We need 5 more hits to knock him out. We might just get enough turns to make this work. We need at least one more hit, and there we go. With 2 HP remaining, we beat Faulkner, level up to level 9, and Umbreon has gotten through. It will learn Pursuit at level 16, I'm pretty sure we can also learn Swift, but let me double check that. And sure enough, we're going to be able to learn Mudslap and Swift in the next section of the game, so we will have some better moves to use when we come up against Bugsy and Rival 2. And with that, I think we're going to be good enough to be able to get through this next section. It's just going to be interesting to see how far Umbreon goes as a dark type. Later on in the game, I mean, it will learn moves like Faint Attack, Quick Attack, Confuse Ray, can learn Moonlight as a healing move, and Screech as a way to maybe get more damage off on opponents. But I think it's really going to come down to the TM moveset and how good these moves actually turn out to be as we go through the game. Shadow Ball, Psychic, Return, Iron Tail. There are some moves that are strong on there. We'll just have to see if they actually work in key battles. So with that one being done, let's move on to Espeon. Let's see how Espeon does. So Espeon, obviously the psychic evolution. We're going to have to see how this one actually works. It's got a different stat spread than what we just saw with Umbreon, obviously. Here we're more focused on special attack, special defense, and speed. And our HP and defense are much lower. And that could bode pretty badly if we're dealing with the same tackle tail whip moveset. We don't have access then to a special attacking move, and that could mean that Espeon fails where Umbreon succeeded, or we might have to go for some struggle strats. We're just going to have to see. So here we have put Espeon into the Total Dial Ball. We'll keep this one still going up against the Chikorita line, and let's just see the starting moveset. And sure enough, we've got Tackle and Tail Whip. Now we will also learn Sand Attack via level up going into Faulkner. So there is a chance that we could go for those sorts of strats, those sorts of accuracy strats in order to make a fight work. The question is just, will we be strong enough to survive up to that point, given that the Honest Abe fight could be pretty rough if we don't have as much defense. So here I am going to take the berry off for rival one just to see if I can beat him without it, but we may need to go for some tail whips in this one. So here I Tail Whip turn one, he growls, I'm going to Tail Whip him again, and we should be able to win the damage race. Granted, we missed a tackle there. Without the tackle miss, I think we got through this one, though. So let's try this again. So again, we're going to Tail Whip him a couple of times, and now go into our tackle spam. We don't have any growls on on this one. So he's looking like a four hit KO and we get through easily on round two. So here in Faulkner's gym, we're going to give the berry and check the stats. At level six, we've got 25 HP, tackle and tail whip, of course, 14 attack, 14 defense, 22 special attack, 18 special defense, and a whopping 20 speed. So we will outspeed even the first Spiro here, but will it be enough with this Espeon? Let's find out. 
So first one, I'm going to try to go all in on attack. And it looks like we did six damage there. So this should be a five hit KO. Granted, that was a critical hit. Here, we've already healed up and it looks like he's doing about eight damage per hit to our Espeon. So I think we need to go for a Tail Whip at the start of this fight and hope that we can get through that way. So since we do outspeed, we get the Tail Whip off first. He does eight damage with that first peck. He's just doing so much damage when he hits. He got a critical hit against us and clearly we're not getting through there. We probably need a critical hit with the Tail Whip here if I have to guess. But let's even try two Tail Whips one time just to see what it does. If it gets us a better range, still looks like we would need a critical hit there. And there we finally get the critical hit, allowing us to knock out the Spiro, and we have beaten Honest Abe. Now we can move on to the God Rod. We probably still will have to go for some Tail Whip strats along with using a berry here, but let's just see if we can get through and make our way to Faulkner. So there we finally get through Rod on the fourth attempt with one HP remaining. We had to use Tail Whip on both Pidgeys and get a critical hit to get it to go. That was brutal, but now we do learn Sand Attack, so we do have a move that we can use for some accuracy strats. I believe it can still hit flying types in this version. In spite of the fact that it's now a ground type move, I think it still works. Let's test this out. Here going into Faulkner, the stats are we are level 8 with 31 HP, Tackle, Tail Whip, and Sand Attack. And we've got 18 attack, 17 defense, 28 special attack, 22 special defense, and 25 speed. Let's see if we can make this work. So here, Faulkner round one. I'm going to go for sand attack first on his Pidgey. A couple sand attacks to lower his accuracy, give him a tail whip. And now we can go into the tackles. And we easily get through that one, nice. Now onto Pidgeotto, I'm going to sand attack it as well. That gust is kind of strong. Now we can give it a couple tail whips, I think, and go into our tackles. And hopefully we can get through. He's doing like seven damage per hit to us. He gets a critical hit. We needed more misses than that. Let's try this again. Round two against Faulkner. Give him a couple of sandies. Then how about a tail whip just because we can. And go in on attack now. We did not get any real misses there, unfortunately. Here, let's try the accuracy strats here as well, and we get knocked out. Now, a lot of people have told me that the reason accuracy strats are worse in Gen 2 is because the game calculates out the accuracy of the move and whether or not it misses before it uses it. But I'm not sure that's the case, because here against Faulkner, he's always using the same move, which is Gust or Tackle against us. So it's not like he's changing his move depending on whether or not he would have hit. At least it doesn't appear so. But correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody show me a, an article or a, a video that, that points that out. Exactly how that actually works. I think that's more likely to happen in cases where there are two moves that the AI wants to randomize between for some reason. So here we are back to Pidgeotto. I'm going to try to give it three sand attacks just to get its accuracy fairly low. And now tail whipping it is just required. We get a nice critical hit there, but we would just need insane accuracy luck on this one, it seems. So here we sand attack the Pidgeotto. We're just hoping to get lots of misses and we don't get any. So here we're getting insanely good luck with the accuracy, but even with it all the way down to one HP, it knocks us out. We've taken 11 attempts against Faulkner so far. The strategy that I've found that works the best is just to go for a single tail whip on the Pidgey and then just go into attacking it to knock it out. It's the Pidgeotto where you have to go for accuracy strats, otherwise you just have no chance of getting through here because it's always going to be knocking you out in four hits, basically, unless you get really good luck with the Pidgey just getting random 5% misses. So I'm just going to give this a couple more attempts and then if I don't get through, we're going to call this one. So here, once again, we have managed to get all the accuracy drops on Pidgeotto and two Tail Whips set up. We have one HP remaining. We need like two more misses and we finally get it on attempt number 12. So Faulkner is possible with Espeon, but man, oh man, was that terrible. And if we have to go accuracy strats here, 
I don't feel super great. Now, that being said, Espeon will get to learn a psychic type move in the next section in the form of confusion. I think it will get there. Plus, it gets mud slap. It's going to get access to Swift, the same as the other evolutions. So it should have a chance in the next section. It's going down to level 9 with 33 HP and 19 attack, 18 defense, 31 special attack, 25 special defense, 27 speed. I think this Pokemon's really all about getting to the point where it has a special damaging move. Once we get to that point, it might be pretty darn good. And of course, against special attackers, it's going to have decent special defense, but its physical attack and defense are just absolute trash, as well as its HP compared to some of these other evolutions. But there we go. We have gotten Espeon through without having to use struggle strats. Guess that's something. Let's move on and see how we do with the Gen 1 evolution, starting with Flareon. So Flareon, just looking at the stats there on the left side, it shows the base stats until we actually pick up our Pokemon. We can see that 130 in attack, it's got good special defense and decent special attack, and then it's weaker in HP defense and speed. But the higher attack stat might just help us here. We're going to start, I believe, with the same moveset of Tackle and Tail Whip. But if we're doing significantly more damage because we have a much higher attack stat, that could make some of these fights that were really hard with Espeon quite a bit easier here. I mean, we have the same defense in HP, or I think the same defense in HP, at least very close. So we should be good, I think. I think Flareon's getting through this. So now we will deviate by putting Flareon into the Cyndaquil Ball. Of course, we want to go up against the Totodile line throughout the rest of the run. But let's just see how this Pokemon actually performs with its different stat spread. Now, I got to say that in Gen 1, Flareon was hands down the worst evolution. It was the worst one for a full game solo run. It was the worst one, I would argue, competitively, because at least Vaporeon got access to Ice Beam and Blizzard, had Hydro Pump, had Acid Armor. It had access to really good HP. So you could find ways to make that a viable part of a team. Even if it wasn't OU, it was still a decent Pokemon. Flareon just got destroyed by everything. Its high attack stat didn't really synergize with anything since fire type moves are all special in the early generations. Maybe you could learn like Hyper Beam Body Slam and use those moves. You could try to mimic Earthquake from something, but you're just going to get wrecked by Earthquake. There, there just wasn't much saving grace to this Pokemon in Gen 1. But here we're going to test out our high attack stat on rival one here. He's going to, of course, use the Totodial and we're just going to go straight in on attack and we're doing decent damage here. He misses the Leer, so I think we can easily get through this. Oh, he did make us use the berry. Oh, no, I should have taken off the berry, guys. Rip. But we get through that fight, no problem. But it's worth noting when I say that it was the worst evolution, I'm not just thinking about competitive. For me personally, I generally analyze Pokemon through how they would do in a full game solo run. And that was where the fire type really got wrecked. In Gen 1, everything wanted to kill fire types. So the fact that they could sure get access to fire blasts, it, it didn't really matter. By the late game, nothing was weak against fire and everything was super effective against it. Lance was just a hard wall, as was Lorelei. You just couldn't get through the game on anything close to minimum battles with this Pokemon unless you went double team strats and mimic strats. You were basically ending up with a move set of like double team mimic substitute. It's just a completely unoriginal strategy that just completely breaks the game. But other than that, you weren't getting through on minimum battles. So here we can check Flareon stats coming into Faulkner's gym. We are at level six, 25 HP. Tackle and Tail Whip, we've got 22 attack, 14 defense, 18 special attack, 20 special defense, and 14 speed. Let's see how we do against the Honest Abe fight. Let's give a berry just to be safe and uh, try to take him on. So first things first, I'm just going to try to go all in on attack. We're not going to outspeed here, but <laughs> and we miss our first tackle. Our tackle did six damage there, so normally this would be a five hit KO. Let's try this again though, and we might try one Tail Whip just to see if it affects anything. So he's doing seven damage or eight damage with each hit. 
With a Tail Whip, though, we are doing enough damage that if we just get a single critical hit, we will knock him out. So this is definitely possible, it's just not necessarily going to be consistent. Now it's also possible, because we're getting him down to 1 HP, that there's a range that we could get. Not entirely sure, but we just have to keep grinding this out a few times to try it. So there we finally get the critical hit on him and we knock out on this Dave, get to level 7. It's all just about getting the critical hit. It turns out it doesn't really matter if you use a Tail Whip or not. You're either taking 5 hits to knock him out with a critical hit or 4 hits plus a Tail Whip to knock him out with a critical hit. Either way, you need a critical hit there. So it's just a matter of, I decided to end up going all in just on the tackle strat since I'm giving myself more opportunities to get a crit by doing it that way. But you can really go either way. So now it's just time to take on the God Rod, put on a berry and make our way to Faulkner. So we get to level eight there on Rod, we can heal up, but let's check the stats as we go into the Faulkner fight. Flareon is now at level 8 with 31 HP, Tackle, Tail Whip, and Sand Attack, of course. It's got 28 Attack, 17 Defense, 22 Special Attack, 25 Special Defense, and 18 Speed. So we should outspeed the very first Pidgey, and then we'll just have to see how we do against Pidgeotto. I'm going to give the berry, of course, save the game. Let's try first just going all in on attack. Let's see if that can work or not. So here... Faulkner attempt number one. We are getting mud slapped by the Pidgey, of course, and it's gotten us down all the way to using our berry there. Now on to Pidgeotto, it's gonna use Gust. It's doing seven damage there. Looks to be seven to eight damage per hit, and we would need to not miss any attacks here. So I think we have to auto reset anytime we end up using our berry on the Pidgey and just hope to eventually get through the Pidgey without any misses. So that time we get through Pidgey without any misses, I think we can try some sand attack strats on the Pidgeotto just to even the playing field a little bit, but it's looking like it's just doing too much damage to us. And when we hit it with tackle, we only did six damage there, so it's actually a seven hit KO here. So I think Tail Whip might help us in that, but let's see. So there we got a critical hit on Pidgey, so we only took one Mud Slap. Now I'm going to try to Tail Whip here on the Pidgeotto, and let's see how much damage Tackle does here. We get another critical hit, taking it down to 14 HP, but then we miss, so we don't have any shot there. That was about the best luck we could have hoped for. I'm going to give this a couple more attempts, and then we might have to go into Struggle Strats. So in this one, we've actually managed to get Pidgeotto's accuracy all the way down. But if it hits me one more time, I go down. So I just don't think that this one is possible within reason. We're already up to 21 attempts here on Faulkner. It just doesn't seem to be reasonable within the fact that we're always getting our accuracy dropped by that Pidgey. So the only thing to test out is if Struggle Strats could somehow get us through here. The way that Struggle could possibly get us through is it might turn that Pidgey into a two-hit KO. And if it's a pure two-hit KO, then we actually have a decent shot of maybe, just maybe, being able to get through that fight. So here we have set it so that we have zero PP in every single move. In theory, we would have to go use up all our PP against wild Pokemon and heal up with potions. But let's just see, if we did have struggle, would we be able to get through Faulkner in this situation? So here against the Pidgey, struggle did exactly half. So if we can manage to hit the second time and get a range, because it looks like it's an 11 or 12 damage range, so we survived with one HP, that leaves it at a three hit KO there, that's not what we were looking for. But if we can maybe get the right range, we looked really close to being able to take out Pidgeotto there. Let's try this again and see if we can get two high damage rolls. So that time we did 13 damage with the first struggle, so we knock out the Pidgey with only one Mud Slap. Here we get to use our struggle and we did nine damage, okay. So here we probably still need a critical hit against this Pidgeotto in order to make this work but it's much closer than we were getting before. So here we are up to attempt number 50 on Faulkner. And 
What I can say from doing this for quite a while is a lot of times we only get an 11 damage range here with struggle against the Pidgey, which means it's a three hit KO still. Here we have to get incredibly lucky, but we also miss fairly often. So here we got the two hit range, but with one miss in the interim. And now against Pidgeotto, we're gonna get knocked out within two more hits and we're just missing too often and we fail. So that's 50 resets on this fight. <laughs> Now, I've said this lots and lots of times back when we did Quill Lava all the way back in episode one, which was pretty much a similar situation. It's getting mud slapped to death and it just can't land the hits. We have to call these at some point. At some point, we just have to say it's not reasonable to sit here and reset. And this is one of those spots where when you get mud slapped this much, you just don't really have a choice. You have to just give up on it at some point and say, this ain't happening. So it's too bad, but we actually have to eliminate Flareon from the challenge. I'm not saying you won't get it. You could come in here and get it on your first attempt, but what you would need to do is come in with the struggle strats, get a two hit range on that first Pidgey, and then on Pidgeotto, you need a critical hit and otherwise no misses for the entire fight. If you can get that, then you will win this fight eventually. It's just a matter of resets, but I think it's too luck based to continue in this challenge. So Flareon is out of there. Let's move on to Jolteon, who's probably gonna have a similar issue with the only advantage being speed. Speed could be what it needs to get through this, but let's find out if it works. So as mentioned earlier, Jolteon was my favorite Gen 1 Evolution. It was the only one I actually really liked. The other ones I thought were just kind of meh, personally. But Jolteon could be really bad right here because it's about to run into the buzzsaw that is Faulkner. <laughs> I think it gets to Faulkner just fine, but we're probably going to end up in a very similar situation to what we were just seeing. Here, I mean, our attack and defense and HP are bad. Our good stats are special attack, speed, and then special defense. And the specials don't matter here because we don't have any special moves. So I just don't see how we're getting through with this one. We're gonna still have to face down those mud slaps. This is gonna be brutal, but this might be a chance to just retest. Maybe we get lucky, who knows? But I'm not very hopeful. Here we've put Jolteon into the Totodile Ball. So we will go up against the Chikorita fight. Ah, oh, man, I think we're just about to kick one of my favorite Pokemon to the curb, though. So here going into the rival one fight, I'm going to take off the berry and let's just see if we can beat him without it. And Jolteon will outspeed here. So it's just a matter of getting the hits, I think. Here we can just lead off with tackle. He growls at me, so I'm going to give him a tail whip because he growled. And let's just see. We get a nice critical hit there and he crits us back, but I don't think it matters. We easily get through that fight. No problem at all. So here we've made it to Faulkner's gym with our Jolteon. Level 6, 25 HP, tackle and tail whip, of course. 14 attack, 14 defense, 20 special attack, 18 special defense, and 22 speed. So we're going to outspeed everything in the gym. The question is, is that enough? Here we're going to save the game, take on on Stabe. This might be an easy fight given that he can only use Peck, which we will resist here. So I'm going to give him a Tail Whip first and then go into my tackles. And he's only doing three damage per hit against us. We're doing significantly more to him. So this looks to be a very consistent fight. So let's take on Godrod and then try to make our way to Faulkner. And that's where we really have to pick this one up and see if it is possible or not. Now, funny enough, this is a spot where Rod is actually harder than Honest Dave because he uses Tackle against us rather than Peck. And I've tested this with Tail Whips. I've tested this with Tackles. Either way, it takes five turns to knock out each of these Pidgeys. And we don't have enough HP, so we actually need a critical hit to get through this fight. We have already lost to him like five times in a row. So there we finally get through with the critical hit, but that took 10 resets on Rod just to get through that fight. Now we do learn Sand Attack, but we're kind of going into this fight with Faulkner not feeling very good. 
I don't think we're getting through this one, guys. I'm just going to say that honestly. Unless we get God tier luck, I just don't see how this is going to work. But let's try. So here we can see that Faulkner's Pidgey is basically a four hit KO for our Jolteon, which means we take tons of accuracy drops in that. Now we can make our way to the Pidgeotto, whom we do outspeed, and it is using Mudslap because of the fact that we are resistant to Gust. But this just does not look good. This looks like we need crazy luck to get through. And here on the Pidgeotto, when we do manage to hit it, we only did four damage, so it's an eight hit KO here. There is simply no way. And since we've already tested out the strategy of using Struggle with Flareon, which has a significantly higher attack stat than Jolteon, I think we can call this one right here. I think we can just say this one is not possible. Jolteon has to be kicked out too, because even with Struggle, at best, it's going to have Pidgey in a three hit KO range, which is already worse than the range that we had before. I'll give it like two attempts just to see maybe if something pops out to me, but otherwise, we're just going to have to say Jolteon doesn't get through. So here we have made it so that Jolteon has no PP in any of its moves, so it can just use struggle strats. Let's just see if there's any chance here. Maybe because we don't get hit by Gust and it's Mudslap instead from Pidgeotto, we can survive more hits and maybe get a luckier range. Let's find out. So here against the Pidgey, we did seven damage. So... Outside of a crit, this is still going to be a four hit KO. So we get through with less than half health remaining. And when we hit Pidgeotto, let's just see if we can actually hit it one time and just see how much damage we would do. So against Pidgeotto, it looks like we did six damage with Struggle. So this would be a seven hit KO. So we just went from an eight hit KO to a seven hit KO here. There's no way that we're going to survive enough turns especially given that our accuracy is dropped. So as much as I hate to say it, because I do love Jolteon, this Pokemon's out of there, guys. So that's two of the evolved evolutions that just, just can't get through here. And that's pretty terrible when you think about it. It just comes down to the fact that they're all starting with the same move set. If these Pokemon each started with a same type move, I think they all would get through, and that's kind of what I expected. In Gen 1, a Jolteon's going to start off with Thundershock, a Flareon's going to start with Ember, so you can kind of expect them to get through the first gym, especially when you're up against a flying gym like this. I don't think it would even be difficult. But when they're stuck using a non-same type move in Tackle and having to deal with accuracy strats, Flareon and Jolteon just don't get the job done. So the only evolution left to test is Vaporeon, then we'll test Eevee. Let's see how this goes. Here Vaporeon I think has at least a decent chance just because it starts with 130 base HP. The attack and defense still aren't good, the speed is also not good, so it could end up getting wrecked, we'll find out, but that, def that extra HP plus the fact that it's not going to have to deal with the mud slaps might be enough to get through here. In fact, I would almost expect that it has to be, given if Espeon was able to get through, Vaporeon with much better HP, I think should be able to take at least one more hit, in spite of the fact that it's gonna be slower. Let's see if that's the case though. So here we've put Vaporeon in the Totodile Ball. Of course, we'll go up against the Chikorita and we just have to hope and pray that it's enough. So first things first, let's take on Rival 1. We're going to take off this berry here because I don't think we need it. Let's save and let's see if Vaporeon can beat up Chikorita. So strategy here, we're just going to go for tackle. We didn't do that much damage, but the fact that we're both doing three damage to each other, but we have 29 HP, whereas he has 21 HP. I'm not going to mess with the tail whips unless he starts growling at me. He misses a tackle there. Perfect and we easily win that first fight. So here we've made it to Faulkner's Gym with our Vaporeon. Let's just check the stats. We're at level six, we've got 33 HP. Tackle Tail Whip, of course. 
14 attack, 14 defense, 20 special attack, 18 special defense, and 14 speed. We're not going to outspeed here for quite a while. Definitely not going to outspeed even against the Pidgeotto, I don't think. But let's try the Honest Abe fight. Maybe we can get through it just with our extra HP and our good, well, our decent man defense. So here, let's try. I'm going to go for tackle. He did eight damage with that first hit. Here, we finally heal up and we've gotten him down to 15 HP. We're definitely not getting through just with tackle strats. Now let's try giving him a tail whip and see how that affects things. So here with the tail whip on, we've lowered his defense. And what we're hoping is to just be able to take him down in fewer hits. So we're basically at the same damage at this point. But I think a critical hit from this range would knock him out. So I think the strategy is just to use one tail whip and then hope to get him in the range where we can knock him out with a crit. There we finally get the crit on the seventh attempt against Honest Abe. We get through with three HP remaining. I actually went for two tail whips that time, but it, it doesn't matter. Either you're going for one tail whip or two tail whips, you still need the critical hit at the end. We just barely get through but Vaporeon did do it and now gets to move on to the God Rod. The difference here between Vaporeon and Jolteon, of course, is that we've got more HP. So I think with the berry, we're gonna be able to get through this one just fine. And sure enough, we get through on the first attempt against the God Rod. No problem there. Now we have to heal up and we're going to have to go to the Pokemon Center because we have too much HP to heal with potions. But here coming into Faulkner, let's go ahead and give it berry to our Vaporeon. I keep wanting to call it Vulpix for some reason. And uh, let's just see how we are actually stacking up with the stats. Here at level 8, we have 41 HP, Tackle, Tail Whip, and Sand Attack, of course. We've got 18 Attack, 17 Defense, 25 Special Attack, 22 Special Defense, 18 speed, so we will outspeed the Pidgey at least. And we've got a lot of HP to absorb some damage. And we don't have to deal with Mud Slap. So we might use a Tail Whip here. I'm not sure. I'm going to start off just going all in on attack to see the ranges. And then we'll adjust our strategy from there. So Faulkner, round number one. Tackle did six damage. So this appears to be a four hit KO range against this Pidgey but we get through with 32 HP remaining. Now against Pidgeotto, I'm just gonna go in on attack. It did eight damage to me. My attack did four damage back to it. So we probably do need to go for at least a Tail Whip here. Might even be worth going for some Sand Attack strats just because of how long this battle will take. Let's find out if it works. So against Pidgey, I don't think we adjust anything. I think we just go all in on the tackles. I don't think we'd get any advantage from doing anything else. Here against Pidgeotto, I think we can sand attack it to see if we can get its accuracy down and maybe get some extra turns this way. So it's very similar to what we did with Espeon. So there we've gotten all the sand attacks set up. Now I'm going to go for a couple tail whips here. And we've still got 23 HP, so we're in a pretty good spot. He can hit us multiple times and we can still manage to get through. We've got eight HP remaining. He hits the gust, but we survive with one HP. And on the second attempt, we take Faulkner down. Very nice. So Vaporeon gets through, Espeon gets through, Umbreon gets through, Jolteon and Flareon fail. That is nuts to me. That is absolutely nuts. Jolteon is the one you would expect to have the type advantage here. It just doesn't work out because it doesn't have any same type moves. So with that being done, now it's time to just test out Eevee and then we'll check our progress so far. Now Eevee has one massive advantage on its evolved forms as it comes into this, which is that it has a same type attack bonus in Tackle. So I'm assuming it's going to start with the Tackle Tail Whip the same as all the evolutions did but it should be doing more damage on average with that move, all else held equal. Now its stats are obviously gonna be significantly lower. It's only looking at 55 attack, 50 defense, 55 speed. It doesn't get any of those big advantages that its evolved forms got. So it may end up still failing, but it's worth trying out given the fact that it has that same type attack bonus. So here against Rival 1, I'm going to try to take the berry off and just see if it works or not. 
let's save the game and try this first rival fight. We might need some tail whips, not sure, but let's just see if it works. So first things first, we're gonna use tackle here. Our tackle did decent damage. Now he growled against us, so I'm gonna retaliate with a tail whip here. And yeah, our tackle seems to be just quite a bit stronger, so we easily take him down without even needing the berry. So here coming into Faulkner's gym with Eevee. Level 6, 24 HP, tackle and tail whip. We've got 13 attack, 12 defense, 12 special attack, 14 special defense, 13 speed. Obviously, we're going to be outclassed by the evolutions in every way, but we have the same type of attack bonus. Let's just see if it's enough to get through Honest Abe. So first things first, we go on an attack as is usual. We missed the first tackle. Are you kidding me? We did six damage there. So this is a five hit range against this Spiro. Of course, if we could get a critical hit, that would also affect things. But let's see if a Tail Whip affects things at all here. So one Tail Whip, we're taking eight damage per hit from him and then a critical hit. So it looks like we would need at least one critical hit against him in order to get through this. Now it does look like he can get a seven damage range as well. And there we go. We actually get through without a crit on that one by just getting a good enough range against the Spiro. So Honest Abe only took three attempts with our Eevee. Very nice. So now it's time to test out God Rod. And one thing that I noticed here is that even though we have lower attack stats, the same type attack bonus in tackle makes our tackles a lot stronger against opponents. Here these Pidgeys are clearly four hit KOs. We can easily get through that first Pidgey. We get a miss right there. That was terrible. But without the miss, I think we are guaranteed to win. Even with the miss, we get through there. No problem. Get to level eight and learn Sand Attack. So now going into Faulkner, let's check the stats. The tail of the tape, we are level eight with 29 HP. Tackle, Tail Whip, and Sand Attack at this point. We have 16 Attack, 15 Defense, 14 Special Attack, 18 Special Defense, and 16 Speed. We will not have to worry about the Mud Slaps in this one. Let's see if it's enough. We're going to go all in on Attack first, and then we'll adjust the strategy from there. So, Round 1 against Faulkner's Pidgey. We get a critical hit there, so it's a 3 hit KO. Very nice. Now against Faulkner's Pidgeotto, it did eight damage with Gust there. We did six damage to him. I think this is a good spot to give him some sand attacks and just see if we can manage to get the accuracy down because that seems to be what we're going to need. Let's try this again here. So one thing that I've figured out at this point is that it's good to use one Tail Whip on the Pidgey because then the Pidgey becomes a pure two hit KO. So it's... Still taking three turns to knock it out, but the difference is when you just use tackle, depending on the ranges, it can be a three or four hit KO. So you're always getting through in three turns if you just use a tail whip there. Now against the Pidgeotto, we just have to kind of hope and pray for good luck. And there we get the absolute insane luck to get through with tons of misses from Gus. And we got a critical hit at the end in order to knock that Pidgeotto out. But this is basically the same as Espeon getting through this fight. Like the entire strategy comes down to get through that first Pidgey as quickly as you can. And then when you get to the Pidgeotto, you just have to sand attack and pray to be able to get through this. What separates this Pokemon from something like Quillava, where we were also trying to use accuracy strats or the Flareon where we were trying to use accuracy strats is that those Pokemon were getting hit by the Mud Slaps from Faulkner's Pokemon. And that means when you're up against having lower accuracy already, and you're trying to lower their accuracy, it, it's just not a good combination. It just doesn't seem to work. But here you can go for the strategy where you get through the Pidgey just efficiently. And then once you get to Pidgeotto, as long as you're not getting hit by Mud Slap, Go all in on the accuracy strats and then hope to get the ranges that you need. And it works out. So it only took eight, eight attempts there to get through Faulkner with Eevee. Eevee is hands down better 
for fighting Falconer on minimum battles than Flareon or Jolteon. Who saw that coming? Eevee passes where a couple of its evolved forms failed. That is just ridiculous to me. Eevee, you legend. <laughs> There's a reason people love Eevee. So let's check our progress so far. Coming back to the overall progress, 138 Pokemon have beaten Faulkner now, nine have struggled, and 75 have failed. We're down to the last four challengers for today, which are going to be Porygon 2 and Porygon, and Donphan and Fanfi. Let's see how they go. I'm going to start with Porygon 2, then come back to Porygon, then we'll deal with the elephants, all right? Let's go. And looking at the stats, Porygon 2 is pretty darn good overall. 515 total base stats makes it number 37 out of 251 Pokemon. It's got really high special attack and special defense is pretty good, but it's also got good defense, decent HP, and decent attack. The speed is the problem. It's like on par with Lapras as far as speed, but this might work out. It just depends on what moves we know as we come into this. And here we're going to know Tackle, Conversion, and Conversion 2. Now, I don't know what Conversion 2 does because I wasn't in Gen 1. Let's find out. Now, I gotta say that for me as a Gen 1 player, the reason I bought Pokemon Blue over Pokemon Red when the games first came out was because Porygon was cheaper in the Rocket Game Quarter. It was only 6,500 casino coins in Pokemon Blue version, where it was 9,999 in Pokemon Red version. So I said, no way, I want to get that Pokemon. I want to collect them all. But the way to do that, I felt, was to be able to get this Pokemon much easier from the casino. So that's what I did. <laughs> so I've always liked Porygon, especially loved Sharpen and Conversion in Gen 1. It doesn't quite get through Brock on minimum battles, unfortunately, but it is a very interesting Pokemon nonetheless. Here, let's see what this Conversion 2 move does. So, Conversion 2, the user's type is made resistant. That's interesting. Let's see how this actually works out in a playthrough. So it's pretty clear, we just need to figure out how these conversion moves work in Gen 2. In Gen 1, conversion simply took on the typing of the opponent, was the way that it works, but it looks like conversion 1 and conversion 2 kind of work differently in this generation. I'm gonna have to experiment a little bit just to know exactly how they work. So here going into the Rival 1 fight, I'm gonna use this opportunity to just test out a little bit the conversion and conversion 2. So starting with conversion, it says that our type will be main resistant. So if I use conversion two, it failed. Okay. Now I transformed into a rock type. Very nice. Now I should simply be able to spam tackle and not really have to worry because it's only going to do one damage per hit to me. So it looks like we need the opponent to use an attack against us and then we can transform our type to resist that attack. So very nice. We managed to go ahead and get through Rival 1 very, very easily there. And we'll keep messing with this. This might help us out against Honest Abe. What I'm interested in, though, is how we will interact with Faulkner and his moveset. Because if we changed into a rock type like we just did in that fight, then he would want to use Mud Slap against us, and that would be really bad. So I'm not sure if this is going to be good or not. Anyway. Here we have met Professor Elm. He's freaking out about the fact that we have a digital Pokemon that can change its typing. He's like, what the heck is this? This isn't the way that things are supposed to be. Come on. This is this is the AI revolution coming in. <laughs> I tried to do a run in Gen 1 where I used chat GPT to tell me how to beat the game with a Porygon in Pokemon Yellow. And it was hilarious because chat GPD does not understand type effectiveness. In spite of the fact that it has all this data from across the internet, it still thinks that electric is super effective against rock, for example. And so it takes more time than necessary just trying to convince it the correct types are actually effective in certain spots. Here we use conversion 2, we've become a steel type. 
And now we can easily just destroy youngster Mikey because, hey, I'm steel type. You can do nothing to me. <laughs> oh, get wrecked. So it appears that Gen 2 does understand type effectiveness far better than ChatGPT. So it looks like ChatGPT just needs to play some GSC for a little while. Maybe it will get better at the game of Pokemon. <laughs> Sam Altman, rip. So here we go. We have made it to Faulkner's gym with the Digital Duck 2.0, Porygon 2, level 6, 28 HP. We know conversion 2, tackle and conversion. We have 16 attack, 17 defense, 19 special attack, 18 special defense, and 14 speed. We're not going to outspeed, but I think that's fine. Let's get into this first fight, and we're going to use conversion 2 to become resistant to Peck. I think that's the way to go. So here, he uses Peck. I use conversion 2. I transform into a rock type. Very nice. Now we can just sit here and spam our tackles, and we're clearly doing more damage than he's doing now. So we're going to get through this every time. Like, the berry activates. We didn't actually need the berry in the end. Easy win. So we can just beat up on Rod and make our way to Faulkner with this one. I think this is going to be a very easy fight. So here we have made it to Faulkner, of course. And checking the stats, we're at level 8 with 34 HP. Conversion 2 tackle and conversion have not changed. We have 20 attack, 22 defense, 24 special attack, 22 special defense, and 17 speed. But what I'm really interested in here is how conversion 2 is going to interact with Faulkner's typing and moves. So let's get into this and test it out. We've healed up, we've got the berry on. Let's take attempt number one. So here in the first attempt against Faulkner, I mean, turn one, we outspeed, so we'll just use tackle, but now I'm gonna use conversion two. What type do we get? We get a rock type. Now I think he's probably gonna use mud slap against us. So let's conversion two again. Now we become a bug type. So now he won't want to use, oh, but, but then he'll want to gust us. Okay, so now we become an electric type. So this is actually very interesting. So the game seems to just randomly choose a typing that resists the move that's being used against us. I wonder if we can become a ghost type somehow, or will it not allow us to take on a type that is immune? So here we became a steel type. Now we became a normal type. Okay, there we became a ghost type. So now we cannot be affected by normal type moves, which is kind of good. We can then easily take that one down. And let's just see if we can get a better typing here. So we become electric type there. Just trying to think what is flying resisted by, right? Basically steel rock. And that's what the mud slap covers and electric, obviously. So yeah, there's probably no point in using conversion two. We should just go all in on tackle. We easily knock that Pokemon out here. We can just come against the Pidgeotto and just spam tackle some more. We heal up with the berry. Just going all in on tackle is more than enough here. The reason I was messing around was just to see what kinds of typings we can get and how the game is going to kind of interact with those. And it appears to be that it's simply going to randomly choose a typing that is resistant to the last move that the opponent used. So opponents who have really good type coverage are going to mess us up. But in the case of like an opponent that only uses one type of move, we can use it to get a pretty big advantage. So very interesting. It's good to see that we got through and we leveled up and learned agility. Very nice. And your cherished bird had nothing on my digital duck. <laughs> Get wrecked. So very nice. We have beaten Faulkner with this Porygon 2, and it's just going to be really interesting to see how this Pokemon does as it goes through the game. It obviously learns tons of moves, things like Zap Cannon. Of course, that's in Kanto, but we could get Blizzard. We could learn Hyper Beam. I'm assuming that we can learn um, Psy Beam via Level Up. We could learn Psychic via TM. We can get Return. There are so many moves that this Pokemon can learn. And if we also have the ability to manipulate our typing as we go through the run, it could become really, really strong, really, really fast. So anyway, we've gotten through with Porygon 2. Let's see if Porygon can match what its upgraded version has done. 
Now, as mentioned, Porygon is one of my favorite Pokemon. Just design wise, I always liked it. And I made my entire choice of which version to buy when Gen 1 came out based on that. You see, back in the day, Nintendo Power Magazine was running like a set of guides before the games were released in America that basically told you all the information that you needed to know, what Pokemon were available in what areas, told you a little bit about the gyms. It wasn't like a full fledged guide, but it, it was kind of a, a abridged version, if you will. And I used to go to my neighbor Alex's house because he was, you know, the rich kid who his parents bought him Nintendo Power magazine. And I used to read all of the guides in advance. And we were both super excited for Pokemon when it first came out. Of course, we had to get it, but I made my decision to get Pokemon Blue version entirely because of Porygon. Absolutely awesome Pokemon, I thought. I just thought it looked cool and I wanted to play with it. So here our Porygon is running the exact same set as Porygon 2. Makes perfect sense. I mean, they're basically interchangeable. I will say one thing, Porygon was a much better Pokemon than I think a lot of people give it credit for. In Gen 1, the fact that it had such good moves from the beginning of the game, like Sharpen and Conversion, the fact that it could get so much type coverage, it could learn moves like Recover. There were so many ways that it could actually be used fairly well in a solo run. Now, it does not get through Brock on minimum battles, at least not on zero DVs. I, if I recall correctly, even on max DVs, it didn't get through in Pokemon Yellow, but I get the feeling that in Pokemon Red and Blue, it might have been possible to get through on minimum battles. That's something I'll have to test. That being said, the run after you get through Brock is actually pretty smooth with that Pokemon. Basically, once you get to Psybeam, you're just crushing everything. And once you get to Celadon, you learn all the strong moves anyway. Uh, Psychic, Ice Beam, you can get Thunderbolt. I mean, at that point, it's just a matter of deciding, OK, which move do I want to learn at this point in the run? So I think that Porygon's going to be even better in Gen 2 just because normal types seem to be even better in this gen. Just my personal opinion. But uh, let's find out. For now, Porygon, we're going to take off its berry. Go ahead and get into the fight against Rival 1. And here the strategy is pretty clear. We are going to use Conversion 2 so that we become resistant to normal type moves and now just spam tackle and just laugh at the fact that he can do no damage. <laughs> oh, look at you with your your health depleting, doing one damage per hit. Easy win. So the rival, he he gets punked by our digital duck. He's he's like, what the heck is this? He, he's not up on this whole AI thing, guys. He's like, I thought I had good AI. Not good enough, but we should be able to manipulate things in that case because we can basically assume that our opponent is going to start off using their strongest move against this Pokemon. So if we can just change our typing so that we're resistant to their strongest move, it should make a lot of fights pretty easy as we go through the run yet again, unless they have really good type coverage. So here we have made it to Faulkner's Gym with normal Porygon. It's at level six, it's got 25 HP, same moveset as Porygon 2. And we've got 14 attack, 15 defense, 17 special attacks, 15 special defense, 11 speed. Obviously the stats are lower than Porygon 2, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Let's fight Honest Abe. So the strategy here pretty clearly, he's gonna hit us first. So let's just let him peck us and then convert into a typing that is strong against Peck. He's still doing two damage per hit. Wow, it's just because our stats are lower. We're gonna get through this fight though, assuming no crits, and there we go, easy win. So we can just come up here, beat up on Rod, give him no respect, guys. Rodney Dangerfield, if you know, you know. Save the game, and uh, this should be an easy fight. So now, getting ready to fight Faulkner, we're at level 8 with 31 HP, same moveset as before, but now 17 attack, 18 defense, 21 special attack, 19 special defense, and 14 speed. We're not really going to outspeed here, maybe against the Pidgey, but definitely not against Pidgeotto. But hopefully we can just get through the same way. We're going to go all in on attack first and see if it works. 
So here, attempt number one against Faulkner. It looks to be maybe a three hit KO there on the Pidgey. Very nice. Now against Pidgeotto, we're just going to go all in on tackle. It seems like we're doing six damage per hit. So this is a six hit KO here. So we're not quite getting through. So this might be a spot where it is good to use conversion too, just to get them to use weaker moves. Keep in mind that Mud Slap, while it does lower accuracy, is significantly weaker than Gust. So that's what I'm going to try here. I'm going to try becoming a Steel type, hoping that he uses Mud Slap. He's only doing five damage per hit with this move. And maybe, just maybe, we can get the crazy accuracy luck that we need in order to get through this fight. It looks like we should get at least two more hits off here. And yeah, one critical hit is going to get us through that, assuming we don't have any misses. So I'm going to just reset for that level of luck. It's not perfectly consistent, but it should ultimately work for our Porygon. The other thing, of course, is we need him not to critical hit us like he just did there. Rip. <laughs> Come on, Faulkner, you want to lose to my digital duck? It's a bird, kind of, kind of. So there we finally got our critical hit. We need to just not miss. And there we go. We get through with two HP remaining, get to level nine and learn agility. So it's not perfectly consistent by any means. It took quite a few resets there. We had 12 resets overall with this Pokemon, but it is possible to beat Faulkner on minimum battles. You just need one critical hit on the Pidgeotto. It doesn't really matter. You can get a three or four hit range on the Pidgey. It just depends on the exact damage rolls you get, but it's enough to get through. All that matters is that Pidgeotto section. Anyway, with that being done, we have gotten through with this Pokemon. All of the analysis for Porygon 2 is pretty much the same as the analysis for Porygon, in my opinion. I mean, they basically have the same movesets. They're going to perform very similarly, I think. So it's just a matter of how they get through. I, I'm really mostly worried about basically ghost type. I think that's going to be a spot where we have to be a little bit careful, but we should be able to find some way through that section, I think. Anyway, for now, let's check the progress so far. So coming back, we were able to add Porygon and Porygon 2 to the pass column. Very nice. So we have two more Pokemon for today, and then we are going to talk about the last two episodes. Stick around for that because I do want to ask you guys to help me out with this a little bit. Let's check out first, of course, Dawn Fan, then we'll check on Fanfi, assuming that it gets through. So first up, Dawn Fan, how good is he? Taking a look at the stats of Dawn Fan, it's coming in ranked 55th out of 251 Pokemon, so it's not quite in the top 20% of all Pokemon. It does have a very high attack and defense stat though, and pretty decent HP. So I think it's gonna do fairly well in this early section. I mean, everything's using physical attacks against us. And even if we're using something like Tackle, a 120 base attack should make that a fairly strong tackle. Let's see what moves we actually start with. And we are going to start with Horn Attack, which is a 65 base power move and Growl. Horn Attack should be perfectly fine here. We've seen in previous runs that Horn Attack, pretty good in this section of the game, even without the same type attack bonus, I think it's gonna be pretty strong. So here I've got to admit, I've never played with Dawn Fan before. I just really knew nothing about this Pokemon. I'm pretty confident after seeing the move set though, that it's going to get through this section. Like everything that we've seen up to this point suggests that it should be pretty good. Now it is a pure ground type. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna hit a wall at some point. I'm, I'm not sure if it's gonna be Chuck when we get up against the water type moves or uh, if, Maybe Rival 2 is just going to prove to be a complete wall for it. It's going to depend on what moves it has at that point. But here we have put Dawn Fan into the Totodile Ball, so we'll go up against Chikorita. So we will have Rival 2 using some Razor Leafs. But for this section, I just don't foresee it having any major issues. The real question is, could this be another like Swine Nub, Pilo Swine sort of situation where Dawn Fan starts with Horn Attack and Fanfi starts with something other than Horn Attack and just gets completely wrecked in the early game. 
So here coming into Rival 1, we're going to take off that berry, go ahead and save the game, and let's just see how strong we actually are in battle. Here, we're just going to hold down A on Horn Attack. I think it's the way to go. We're too slow to outspeed here, but we can see it's like a three hit KO with Horn Attack. So that was an incredibly easy battle. I think that bodes pretty well for this next section. So here coming into Faulkner's Gym, Don Fan is at level 6 with 28 HP. We know Horn Attack and Growl, of course. We've got 21 Attack, 21 Defense, 14 Special Attack, 14 Special Defense, only 12 Speed. I don't think it's going to matter, though. I am going to give the berry just to be safe, but let's get into this Honest Abe fight and see if we just wreck him with our Horn Attack here. So we're just going to hold down A on Horn Attack. It looks to be a three hit KO. Easy win. We don't even activate the berry. Here we can just heal up very quickly and get into the God Rod fight, and then it's on to Faulkner. So with that, let's check the tail of the tape on this one. Don Fan, level 8 now as it comes into the Faulkner fight with 35 HP. Same moveset as before, it hasn't learned anything new just yet, but it's got 26 attack, 26 defense, 17 in both specials, and 15 in speed. I think this is going to be fine. I think this is going to be easy. Let's just go ahead and beat up Faulkner. Apparently, uh, an elephant is stronger than birds. That's that's what we're learning. Pigeons kind of get wrecked by this uh, this angry elephant. So here we're just going to hold down A on Horn Attack. It's a three hit KO here against Pidgeotto. It was never in question. Didn't even use the berry. That was an easy, easy, easy win. Now, I'm assuming that we will, in fact, learn Mud Slap here which should mean that this next section isn't really that bad. The super effective Mud Slap will be more than enough, I think, for Ghastly, and Horn Attack should take down everything else. So it's really just going to come down to Rival 2. Do we get through Rival 2 or not? If we do, then we're feeling great. If we don't, then that's going to be the end of uh, our angry little roly elephant looking thing. I, I always thought this looks more like an anteater, honestly, but I think it's supposed to be based on an ele elephant, maybe? I don't know, tell me in the comments. With that being said, let's check how Fanfi does and wrap this one up. Sorry about that, I keep calling it Fanfi, but it's Fampi. Rip, you can tell I've never played this Pokemon before. And I don't know, maybe people are gonna be like, no, no, it's it's Pampy. <laughs> you're not supposed to pronounce it like phone, you're supposed to pronounce it like Pahon. Nice. <laughs> so here, let's go ahead and get into this last Pokemon for today. I mean, it's a cute little Pokemon, definitely. I wish I had played it back in the day, but I just never picked one up. There were so many Pokemon back in the day when I first played Pokemon Crystal that I just never even bothered catching or using. I'd kind of burned myself out on catching everything in Gen 1, which was enough of a trial trying to get all of the Safari Zone Pokemon way back in the day until you learned the Seafoam Island glitch and then you just got them all easily. But here we go. We got Fampy. We're going to name him Fampy when I do a full game run with him because uh, that's what I'm going to call him. People are going to get angry. They're going to be like, he's Fampy, not Fampy. <laughs> Rip. But let's see the move set. This is the real question. Tackle and growl. Oh my god, we're back in that Piloswine sort of situation. Evolved form gets the good move. Horn attack. And the unevolved form, for some reason, does not. Now you can look at the sprite and say, because it doesn't have horns yet. But come on. Come on. There are no tusks, right? No tusks yet. But I mean, if that's the case, then, you know, every move should be based on the physical attributes of the Pokemon, right? So how does a Dragonite use rap? Somebody tell me. I'm just saying, what what does he wrap them with? Like for Dratini, Dragonair, it makes sense. They're serpents. They clearly wrap around things. But Dragonite doesn't rap anything. I mean, he might be rapping like out on the streets, you know, dropping some bars, but he ain't rapping rapping. You know what I'm saying? No wonder they had to ban rap strats from Gen 1 OU. <laughs> OK, here we go. Let's fight Rival 1. I'm going to take off the berry first. Let's just see how this goes. Can we get through with Fampy here? I'm going to give him one growl just to be safe. 
And now we'll just go into the tackles. He just immediately gets a critical hit. Good job. Oh, but now he's missing. Yes. Yes. Vampy, I believe in you. I believe in you completely. There we go. Look at that. Easy win. So here we are with our baby elephant coming into Faulkner's gym. We've got a level six Vampy with 28 HP, tackle and growl, of course, 14 in attack and defense, and 11 in all our other stats. So clearly we are slightly more attack and defense oriented, which is nice. We can give the berry, save the game, but we might have to get into some growl strats or something here. Let's try the Honest Abe fight. Of course, the first one, I'm just going to go all in on attack. That's kind of my standard strategy, but he did eight damage with that first peck. He did seven with the second, so it's looking like a seven or eight damage range. And we seem to be doing four damage per hit, meaning that this is a seven hit KO range for us against his Spiro. So that's clearly not going to work. So what we need to do, I think, is at least try one growl and see if it buys us some extra time. So here with a growl now, he's doing five damage per hit. So we should at least get some extra turns here, but that did not work. Let's try again. I mean, he got a critical hit, but I think we got a critical hit too. And otherwise we might even have to try a struggle strat here. Yeah, we get him down to 7 HP there, but it's not like we have him in a range where we would knock him out with a critical hit. So I'm going to try a couple more growls because I'm only using one at this point. But if that doesn't work, then we may end up having to do a different strategy like struggle strats here. So it looks like three growls gets him down to doing three damage per hit. So with three growls, we got him down to three HP remaining, and it might be possible, keyword being might be possible to get a critical hit and knock him out. So we're going to try that strategy a few times and see how it works. And there we finally get it. That took forever. <laughs> 30 attempts on Bird Keeper Honest Abe to get the critical hit that we needed to finally beat the Spiro. I swear he got like 20 critical hits on me in that span. Oh, this was, was just brutal, but Fampy does get through. So we do get a progress. We're at level seven. It's on to the God Rod. Now, the reason I took so many resets there is because I could see the range was possible. And that's always the key, right? I give up on some of these Pokemon really fast when I can see that the ranges simply don't make any sense. They simply don't add up. I'm testing different amounts of, of growls, tail whips, sometimes, you know, moves like defense curl or withdrawal, etc. Just to see what is the best range that I can get. And then I'm just trying to reset. But sometimes you just clearly can see even a critical hit would not get you through the fight. And as we know, one critical hit is the limit here. If it takes more than one critical hit to get through a particular fight, or if it's just so insanely luck based that we reset forever and it doesn't work, we just don't do that here. We're, we'll save that for maybe some, you know, single Pokemon full game solo runs to try to reset for ridiculous luck, maybe, but we're not doing that in this series. So here we can take on Rod and hopefully make our way to Faulkner. Let's see how this fight goes. So it does appear that we need to at least use Growl in this fight. The Pidgeys are normally doing about five damage per hit, but a Growl gets them down to three damage. And then I think we can outpace them in terms of the damage race, assuming we don't get a ton of misses. So here we get a nice miss from the Pidgey. We take down the first Pidgey on Rod's team. Let's Growl at the second Pidgey and see. Oh, it immediately gets a critical hit. Come on. I swear Fampy has been having very bad luck with enemy critical hits. So there we finally got through, but it required two misses from Rod's Pidgeys. They have a 5% chance to miss with Tackle. That was actually ridiculous. I was resetting there for quite a while trying to get through that fight. And we've already taken 37 resets with Fampy just here in Faulkner's gym. This is brutal. And it makes me really wonder if this Pokemon has any shot against Faulkner himself. We're going to give the berry here. We did just level up to level eight, which is a damage rounding threshold. It's very important to keep that in mind. 
So here at level eight, we have 35 HP. We still know tackle and growl. We have 17 attack, 17 defense, 14 in both specials and 14 speed. We should just outspeed the first Pidgey, I believe. And then we're gonna be outsped by Pidgeotto. But let's just see if we can find some way to make this work. So here is Faulkner attempt number one. We're gonna use Growl on this Pidgey and it's doing three damage per hit now, very nice. We're going to simply spam tackle. It got a critical hit, which is not what we wanted to see, but we do get through two Pidgeotto on green health. I'm going to give this one a growl as well. It did seven damage with that first attack. Now it's down to doing five damage per hit, but this is not looking good. We are doing so little damage in return, only four damage per hit, that it's only at about half health right now as it's about to knock us out. So we didn't get any critical hits there, of course, but we did get one critical hit against us from the Pidgey. So let's just see if we can get a better range here. So we got a crit on the Pidgey. So we get through to Pidgeotto with 23 HP this time. I'm going to try giving it a couple of growls just to see if we can get its damage down even more. Now it's doing three damage per hit. The problem is that we're doing so little damage in return that I'm not sure we stand a chance. We did miss one tackle there. So we got to think one more tackle plus a critical hit possibly could have gotten us through there, but we got the crit on the first Pidgey. So that's probably not entirely legit. Keeping in mind, Pidgey can miss with tackle. So there is a chance that we could get the tackle miss rather than the crit and get the same results. But this is really, really close. This is really, really borderline. Now, one thing that we can do is use two growls on the Pidgey and that gets it down to doing two damage per hit. So by growling once, it's down to three damage per hit, growling a second time, two damage per hit. Now we can get through with more health on average. I don't think any more growls are worthwhile. It's still going to do two damage per hit. It got a critical hit there. I'm going to just reset in that spot. But that might be the strategy to get through without needing a crit on the Pidgey and still have enough HP that we can try to get the range that we need on Pidgeotto and still only need one critical hit in this fight. There we got a lucky critical hit on this Pidgey. So we do knock it out. We've got 24 HP remaining. Let's try Pidgeotto now. So we're going to give Pidgeotto at least two growls. That gets it down to doing three damage per hit here. So in theory, we should get six hits off if it doesn't critical hit us. And then we just kind of have to hope and pray that we can get a crit at the right time. But there, it doesn't even look like a critical hit would have gotten us through. So... The only thing left to try is the struggle strat. Just because struggle is stronger, it can get us through with theoretically more health, but let's see if that works or not. So the way we're gonna approach these struggle strats is a little bit different than with some other Pokemon. It's a little more like Ghastly, where we're gonna come in with enough tackles to knock out the Pidgey. That's the first part. And we're going to come in with enough growls so that we can growl Pidgey twice and growl Pidgeotto twice. And then the hope is that we'll have enough HP left to struggle down Pidgeotto. We're going to test this out and then I might try a couple different iterations just to see if anything will work. The whole idea here is that I think we want to get through Pidgey without using struggle. Just ideally, I think we get through that one just like that and now we struggle on Pidgeotto. The idea, of course, is that we still would have enough PP to use Growl here on Pidgeotto. So here, Struggle seems to be doing five to six damage per hit, and we're taking one damage in return from Recoil each time. So it still might be a situation where maybe a critical hit gets us close, maybe a better range on the Pidgey, like a single miss from Tackle gets us closer. So there we finally get through Faulkner on attempt number 20 using struggle strats. But what it came down to was this. We got a turn one miss from the Pidgey's Tackle. It happens 5% of the time, which allowed us to set up two growls before he hit us the first time. He was only doing two damage per hit. Then we got a critical hit on the Pidgey, allowing us to get through to the Pidgeotto with 27 HP remaining, 
Then we simply set up our growls as normal. We had one extra tackle to use on the Pidgeotto, and then it was struggle the rest of the way. So it does get through, but man, that was close. Man, that was terrible. Fampy, I'm not, I'm not too confident in this Pokemon. <laughs> I think it's gonna get completely destroyed by Rival 2. I don't see any way it's gonna make it through. Yes, it just learned Defense Curl. Yes, if it could get Rollout to go with Defense Curl, that would be pretty cool. I'm just not sure that's gonna be the case. Let's look at the move set in the next section very quickly. So it's going to learn Flail at level 17. We're definitely not getting to take down just yet. And then it looks like we will learn Mud Slap, which is a same type move. But that's it. So Mud Slap strats might come into play that might let us get through Rival 2. I'm really not sure. We're not going to learn anything else, though. So it's not like Growl or Defense Curl are going to help us out at all when it comes to Rival 2's. Yeah, Bayleaf is just going to completely destroy this Pokemon. That's my word anyway. That's what I think. Tell me what you think. And there we have it. We have gotten through today's challengers. Let me post up the next group. But we can see 141 Pokemon have beaten Faulkner on minimum battles, just straight up using their normal movesets, using strategies. 10 Pokemon have beaten Faulkner, but it required struggle strategies to do so. And 75 Pokemon have failed. But what this means is that 151 Pokemon have gotten through Faulkner and there are only 25 Pokemon remaining, so we can already say that in one form or another, at least 60% of Pokemon are beating Faulkner on minimum battles. That's pretty ridiculous. But with that, it's time to talk about the last two episodes. So first off, in episode 17, we're gonna have 16 more challengers as I'll pull them up here on the screen. We're going to get the fossil Pokemon, Snorlax, all the legendary birds, the legendary doggos of Gen 2, and Standler and Smeargle to round it out. But you might be noticing something. If we do 16 Pokemon next time, that means nine Pokemon are left for the final episode. And given that some of them are Ubers, that's going to be way too short of an episode, right? What are we going to do with the rest of the time? Well, this is where you guys come in. What I want you guys to do is to vote in the poll that I will be posting along with this video on the channel's community page. By voting there, I'm going to pick five Pokemon that I think were pretty close that might have gotten through with a slight variation in strategy. And I'm going to take your votes on which ones to actually do in the next episode. I might choose two, I might choose three, if you think I got it completely wrong, you can write comments on that community post to let me know. No, you should have done this Pokemon instead. I'll check the likes on the comments to see if uh, it might be a winner. With that being said, that will get us another two or three Pokemon, getting us up to 11 or maybe 12 Pokemon for the next episode. So what about the remainder? Well, fortunately, the channel has grown enough that we have some channel members and I haven't shouted them out yet. So let's give them a shout out in this video. We're talking Roy Merkel, Marvelous Racing, Kyle Baker and Bintendo. These guys have shown tremendous support to the channel and I can't thank you guys enough. So as a thank you to the channel members, we're going to add four more Pokemon to that episode. Here's what you guys need to do for the four channel members. Look at the fail column of these 75 Pokemon that have failed to get through the Faulkner section and choose any one of them that you want. And I will give that Pokemon a second lease on life with the addition of one egg move. Whatever egg move you think might have gotten them through this section of the challenge, let's give it a shot. It has to be a legitimate Gen 2 egg move something that was actually available by breeding so that we could have it at level five. But as long as it's a legit egg move, we're going to try it out. So with that, we're going to have 16 challengers in the next episode, and we're going to have somewhere between 15 and 16 challengers in the final episode. With that, we will then put the Faulkner minimum battle series to rest because it's time to move on to Bugsy. 
I hope the explanation was clear, but if you have any questions, I always answer every comment down below. So just post them down there and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Two more guys. And then it's all about moving on. Bugsy and Rival 2. This is going to be nuts. Anyway, I just want to say thank you guys so much. This has been such a grind getting through all of these Pokemon just through the Faulkner section. And we still got tons to go. So if you're enjoying it, just let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.